Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this uh, record-breaking Friday. Here we are in the middle of the day across the uh, eastern Pennsylvania, uh, down to uh, Maryland, uh, Delaware, through New Jersey, uh, into southern, uh, southeastern New York. We've got temperatures already into the 70s. So the warm front came just barreling through last night. We actually saw temperatures rise by 6 or 7 degrees between 11 p.m. and 1 a.m., uh, in across much of this area that was under the marine influence and the result is that today we have an absolutely spectacular day here the uh, marine la uh, layer never really got established it's very unusual uh, most <clears throat> certainly this time of year warm fronts should be struggling but instead there's just such a, a warm push plus you have that developing storm uh, out in the midwest uh, that is uh, basically giving the fuel to bring all the warm air up the eastern seaboard and fueling that storm uh, to produce uh, some snows. And we're going to uh, show you a widen out a little bit and we'll move the map over uh, to the Midwest where we have this uh, low pressure center uh, that is developing at the moment in, there we go. And the low center itself now looks to be in northeastern Iowa or northwestern Illinois. I'm having a tough time seeing the borders here, uh, but it looks like uh, it's sitting. <laughs> I need to get better glasses. Uh, it is actually in uh, northeastern Iowa, getting met, ready to move uh, toward Wisconsin, and you can see the large area. I've got the radar echoes here uh, showing you where the rain and snow is and some of the heavier precipitation and where you see uh, the orange areas showing up. Uh, that's where they have blizzard warnings in effect so it's underneath the radar echoes they're not showing well but look at this huge warm sector that's developed and that's going to uh, feed some fuel to some uh, strong thunderstorms today that will develop in the warm sector across parts of the midwest uh, and there is a risk for severe weather uh, in uh, indiana uh, illinois and on up into um, ohio and then that risk is going to spread eastward also even into southern michigan if that warm front gets any further north but this is uh, really quite the push of warm air that's coming into this. You have, you really don't have overly cold air on the northwest side, but it certainly is cold enough to produce one foot plus snows in some areas. You've got temperatures down in the low 20s, but we're not seeing temperatures down in the in the low teens, single digits or below zero behind it. So it's basically working with what cold air there is around. So let's look at it on the satellite view and show you, uh, here's the warm front. It's just well up into upstate New York. So they're getting rain up. Uh, further north from there into New England, and that warm air is going to go all the way up into ski country, by the way. Storm that was off the east coast of Florida, you know, if this were June, this probably would have become some kind of subtropical system, but uh, it's not, and that's meandering north, northeastward. Also, if we were in a, a, a more typical wintertime pattern here, uh, we would probably be uh, concerned about this, but it, it's not the case. And here's the uh, Midwest snowstorm that is going to be heading up uh, to the Northern Great Lakes and eventually into Southeastern Canada. That's also going to trigger the possibility of showers and thunderstorms and possibly some strong thunderstorms tomorrow across Pennsylvania, New Jersey, down to Maryland, Virginia, and West Virginia. So a pretty active weather scene going on in the uh, East. In the West, we have really not too much happening for the time being. Uh, we do have a lot of clouds uh, out in uh, the central Rockies. In fact, I'm going to just kind of go out there just a little bit to see if we see anything with regards to the uh, some radar activity. There is low pressure there, uh, but it doesn't look like there's too much happening from the standpoint of precipitation. We have some uh, watches and warnings up for parts of the northern Rockies. There's a little bit of precipitation being sh showing up on the radar at the moment. And then right along the west coast, with this upper air disturbance that's dropping southward uh, along the upper west coast into northern california some pretty cold temperatures away from the coast and we've got various winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings up in a few places there not uh, all quiet right now in uh, central and southern california and by the way this is the storm that was supposed to come barreling inland but you can see what's happened there's a big upper high to the north, and it basically trapped this. It, it just forced it to go southward and, and trapped it. So weather models made an about-face. Instead of shooting it 
toward the coastline yesterday. It completely backed off from that. And this system is just going to basically stay quasi-stationary over the next couple of days. Some of the moisture, uh, it's picking up some tropical moisture. You can see this little feeder here. So some of that might be moving into Southern California at some point. But this is not going to be uh, a potential uh, big event for California. That was a serious concern after last week's storm and all the rain and snow of this winter because uh, dams are filled to capacity. Rivers are overflowing their banks with what they have already. So even a, a minimal amount of rain on the order of an inch or two um, could have caused some really serious flooding problems and also put some of these dams in up in central and northern California in jeopardy. So thankfully, that is not going to happen. Now, going forward, I want to show you that uh, the teleconnection indices uh, measuring pressure changes in various parts of, of the world, uh, the uh, north, the uh, Pacific side of the United States, the western, uh, the ridge building in the west, and the PNA, the Pacific North America Index, uh, is going to go from sharply negative, so in other words, from a deep trough, uh, to a ridge. Uh, once we get into the early part of March, and it rises very rapidly. So that might signal something trying to develop around the 5th or the 6th, right in this uh, area here, where we have this rapid ascent. And at the same time, we have the North Atlantic Oscillation, uh, which measures what we usually refer to as the Greenland block or blocking pattern. When you have higher pressures up toward the polar regions, that displaces cold air southward. Uh, that is being shown to go rather negative. Uh, at the very beginning of March and staying negative through the first 10 days. And the East Pacific Oscillation, which is sort of the opposite of the NAO, just it's in the East Pacific, goes slightly positive. Now, usually when the EPO is negative, it tends to give a colder look to much of the um, much of North America. And sometimes, a lot of times that cold air does bleed into the East, but um, it doesn't necessarily mean it can't be cold. The NAO may compensate for the positive EPO. So we have two out of three indexes here that are still pointing to the idea of what we've been saying, which is a, a window of opportunity with regards to winter weather coming back. And I think, you know, we're talking, uh, you know, starting very late next week uh, to uh, the middle of March at least. And we're going to look at the upper air pattern on the GFS because, you know, last night uh, it really kind of locked into this cold idea uh, coming back to the east. So here's your trough in the west early next week. And you can see what happens. Now, I want you to watch up here, up in Greenland. This is how a block functions, okay? Remember the analogy? I, I, I like to give the analogy of the old uh, baby toy with the gears in the box. And you kind of put the gears in, in uh, together in the puzzle, and then you turn a knob and then all the gears turn at the same time and the baby goes yay you know gets keeps him from crying for a little while um same concept except that the gears are here are constantly changing in size and 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 shape and position and sometimes the gears disappear and new gears form but they all kind of turn on each other so watch what happens here in greenland over the weekend when we go from deep low pressure there and gradually uh, this ridge here in the atlantic that builds along 40 north cuts off a high over greenland early next week and if you watch as we go through next week next thursday friday the saturday march 4th that high just stays up there it really doesn't fall begin to weaken until <coughs> begin to weaken until the week after and in the meantime you can see how these upper air systems <laughs> respond to that because instead of moving in their normal west to east fashion, they get deflected southward. So you see how this trough now shifts into the eastern part of the United States because of that block. And what I think is going to happen is that you're going to have a series of weather systems that are going to be moving in that strengthening northwest flow. Here's your blocking high. Okay, so you've got this, you know, this established, this polar flow beginning to establish in the e in that affects the eastern part of the United States. The west, on the, in the meantime, has a little bit of a flat ridge there, so uh, it stays kind of dry in areas of the south. They might have some activity up in the Pacific Northwest with this, but as far as the uh, continuous deep storms, that comes to an end over there. So the action begins to shift into the east, 
and you can see how these weather systems kind of barrel on through underneath that upper high, you know, one after another, after another, and that high is still there. Now we're looking at Sunday, March 5th. So the, 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 the real forecast question in a pattern like this is how the models handle these weather disturbances that are coming down in the flow. And if they are um, underdone, if they're stronger, they may wind up digging further south. If the trough itself, this whole scheme is perhaps a little weaker, or if the block maybe isn't quite as strong, then you're going to see these systems go further north. So it'll be a question of whether we'll be watching lows go by near or just to the south of, of southern New England, perhaps down into the northern mid-Atlantic states, or do the surface lows move across the Great Lakes and into New England, in which case we just get simple cold fronts here. If the tracks are further south, then you're talking about uh, some possibilities. I, I would emphasize that given the winter we've had, the areas that have seen snow, which is basically uh, north of 41 degrees north latitude, so from about northern New Jersey, northeastern Pennsylvania, New York City, Long Island, southern New England, New York State, and northeastward through New England, this opens the window of opportunity for you. For areas south of there, southern New Jersey, down to the mid-Atlantic states, I, I think that Unless this uh, this block becomes really strong and forces everything even further south, you still you know you you'll see some colder weather, but uh, I think your snow chances are going to be slim. Uh, uh, again, unless uh, the the scheme of this pattern is where it's deeper and 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 the block forces everything to be further south. But it's uh, certainly something that uh, I I think is 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 definitely worth watching here uh, because of the fact that you know you do have what appears to be this change uh, in the overall pattern. And that's, um, you know, going into the middle of March, which is a highly volatile time. And you can see these troughs do amplify when they come into the Northeast. On this particular run today, um, everything's kind of shifted a little bit further to the North. But, you know, we're going in the long range now. We're at March 8th and 9th. And even as we go into you know, March 12th, you know, there's some semblance here at the end of the period. Now, suddenly it wants to bring some troughing back in the West because the, the block is broken down to some degree. So you get this ridge to pop up in the East. But the, the, the GFS has been going back and forth on this. If we go back to last night's run, uh, it didn't quite do that. Uh, it actually, last right night's run was very dynamic. Uh, you know, we have to, <clears throat> we can't really rely, you know, models are going to be volatile from run to run. So we can't, so much focus on the most recent run. We have to sort of look at the last several runs to look at, especially when we're deep in the long range part period here, to see what maybe the possibilities are. And here's an instance where the run last night had a much, you know, had a stronger block. You see it right here. We're at March 3rd. There's your block. You got that northwest, this flow setting up from Canada with all these weather systems beginning to pile along one after another. And on this run last night, you can see that the upper air systems were further south, particularly late in the period, like around March 7th, 8th. There's a really not, uh, fairly impressive looking trough here in the eastern part of the United States. And then there's another one that it brought in around Mar March 11th and 12th uh, that looked uh, kind of interesting, too, with a ridge in the west. And not as much ridging in the east because of the fact that you've got more going on in the Atlantic. That blocking high kind of wants to hold things firm. So these are going to be the keys going forward. Um, again, I will say, you, cannot, you know, not to go sp by the specifics of each model run because, you know, we're going to be looking for these variations and the question of whether the block is going to be strong enough to force uh, action to be further south. So, you know what, let's look at, well, let's look at the GFS from last night first, okay? And you can take a look at, there's your Midwest storm and here's your cold front with the severe weather that will probably occur ahead of it. Uh, that line shrinks a bit, but uh, it's pretty concentrated. There's a fairly decent uh, area uh, of lift here going on, uh, vertical motions going on along the East Coast. You have all this very warm air, you know, the lows strengthening up as it goes into southeastern Canada. So that's a pretty decent cold front that's moving through. Uh, back at snows and lake effect going on in the lakes, some light snows around in the Rockies in a few places, weak weather systems there. Another low starting to get ready in New Mexico. Uh, we've got some moisture coming into California, which really doesn't look all that impressive to me. 
Again, this was last night's um, model run. In fact, I'm going to back it up uh, one run further. This was the mid run. I want to go to the earlier one. And you can see here beyond this, all right, so there's your front that goes by. And we got a little, uh, here comes the next low that moves out to the Great Lakes on Wednesday, March 1st. Uh, toward the Great Lakes. So this will be another uh, rain event here in the east, and it's going to get warm again. I think probably on Wednesday and Thursday, we could see 50s and 60s again with some showers and thunderstorms. And then after that, you start to see these series of weather systems diving down. Here's the first one uh, for next weekend, and that goes out. Here's a stronger one that goes to the north, but that sort of sets up uh, the next uh, the next two systems, the, uh, another one that comes through, and this one winds up on last night's run developing into a pretty strong storm just off the off the coast southeast of Cape Cod. Meanwhile, in the northwest, you can see the action there with that jet stream just into the northwest. You get uh, precipitation that moves in uh, there, but not into uh, areas of the south and southern Oregon and California. And then finally, at the end of the period, we had a very interesting looking low in northern Alabama with cold high pressure building down to the north. Now that was last night's run. Let's look at today's because today's has the idea of things being perhaps a little less deep. But let's take a look uh, before we prejudge. So here's our front with the showers and storms tomorrow. So that looks pretty consistent. And, you know, I would suspect, by the way, that severe weather will not occur over Long Island and for south, and southern New England for south-facing shorelines because of the onshore flow. Uh, but, you know, sometimes there's enough dynamics here that maybe some of those storms could hold together. So here we go into next week. Same idea with the low to the lakes. We'll probably warm up some Wednesday into Thursday, although it's not as aggressive on this run as it was on the prior. The system for next weekend is weak and goes to the north. There's one that follows on Sunday that moves off to the Gulf of Maine. So that looks like some snow for New England. There's one right behind that, a stronger one. But again, this is tracking further north because of how the model handles things. And, you know, then later in the period, it does want to take uh, one around March 10th, a low to the south, and then another stronger low that comes out. Now, this is in response to the fact that it wants to pop the ridge up again. Uh, but you know what? It did this yesterday at, at, uh, for a couple, uh, at one point, then it backed off of it. Then it went to it again. So you get the mystery here. Uh, the bottom line, I think, is that we're going to have a, I think it's going to get interesting in the in the northeast uh, for uh, that window between, let's say, March 5th and March 15th. Maybe it'll last a little bit longer if the trough doesn't decide to come back into the west. Some of the longer range European models, by the way, suggesting that the cold might last a while. Now, that was yesterday. We'll see if... Uh, if the runs over the next couple of days on the longer range weekly models continue to show that idea, that was kind of a flip from uh, on that model, which <clears throat> has been sort of showing blowtorch conditions uh, as uh, you know for eternity. Now it's kind of flipped on that, uh, so we'll see if this holds. So I hope this gives you a really good flavor of what's going on with respect to the longer range pattern over the next um, next two weeks. And we will, of course, keep you posted on uh, afternoon developments when the European model comes out. And we'll look at the late afternoon GFS. And I'll put up a post on meteorologistjoechaffee.com later today regarding that. Uh, you can download my app for uh, New York City, New Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut, Hudson Valley, and Eastern Pennsylvania, uh, and subscribe, which is free. You can subscribe to my forecasts for those areas uh, individually, uh, just 99 cents a month, and you get my forecast, my written forecast, my opinions. You don't get icons. You don't get some co computer-generated forecast. You get me, okay? So I hope I'm worth 99 cents. <laughs> Cheaper than a cup of joe. So anyhow, I, have a great Friday. If you're, in the, if you're in my area, I hope you are outside enjoying this absolutely beautiful weather. I would have gone fishing today, except for the fact that I have to head into my uh, day job uh, this afternoon and evening, which is at Fios One News Long Island and Fios One News New Jersey. Um, you, if you have Fios cable, you can see it, uh, see me there. And uh, I will also be on WPIX TV on March 18th and 19th. Um, just got those days booked. So you can watch me. Uh, in the New York City area, and PIX is uh, one of those super stations, so you can probably catch it on satellite, and you can also watch uh, watch me online. 
And of course, you can uh, see more on my Facebook page, uh, Meteorologist Joe Chaffee, so you can check that out too. Have a great Friday. If uh, you don't tune in this weekend, have a great weekend and watch out for some severe weather in parts of the, in parts of the Midwest today and in parts of the Northeast on Saturday.